So spray polyurethane foam literally has one of the highest wind uplift resistance ratings in the market today. Hello, I'm Jack Moore, President and CEO of West Roofing Systems, and today we're going to learn about spray foam roof systems in high wind environments. It bonds tenaciously to its substrate, and basically any building material it bonds tenaciously to. So how do we prove what the wind uplift rating is? They've done testing with FM directly to a metal panel and directly to plywood. And actually what happens is the testing device fails at about 160 pounds per square foot. So what does that mean? That the roof is stuck so tenaciously to the substrate that the equipment designed to test the failure rate fails before the roof system fails. So how do we prove this in the real world? We've got history, we've got experience. We've been post-hurricane areas to ascertain performance and also repair. Just because the roof didn't come off doesn't mean it wasn't damaged. The, so the debris will actually ding and nick the polyurethane foam roof, but it doesn't come off. So it still does provide protection to the interior of the building. We've literally looked at one building that was spray foam, intact, providing waterproofing, the next two buildings, the roofs, the corners had peeled back or other damage had occurred. So while we, if we install directly to concrete or a metal or a plywood roof deck, we know that we've got a tremendous wind uplift rating. If you're going to be doing a recover situation, there's got to be more consideration. The failure point in a recover situation isn't going to be between the foam roof and the old substrate because we're bonded so tenaciously. The failure point is going to be maybe at the perimeter edge of that existing or original installation. So when we're considering re-roofing in a high wind zone, we've got to make sure that one, we need to ascertain the existing uh, assembly has got the minimally accepted wind uplift rating, which we can do some field testing to ascertain those results. Or in most situations, what we're going to do is put a recovery board down we're going to mechanically attach that recovery board per the wind uplift design minimums that we want to achieve and then we'll install the spray polyurethane foam on top of that. Even if the EPDM or TPO or other single ply system is fully adhered, that adhesion uh, deteriorates over time. So as the systems begin to age, that adhesion of the, the chemical bond between the membrane and the substrate breaks down over time, critically at the seams. So with the polyurethane foam being fully adhered and bonded as a single mass, as a single component to that substrate, we don't have that opportunity for wind to get underneath and, and create a failure point of the adhesion between the substrate and the polyurethane foam. So how do you know if a spray foam roof is right for you? One. If you're in a high wind zone, uh, you seriously want to consider a spray foam roof system. If energy savings are important to you, that and if you really want it to be the last roof installed on your building, you really should consider a spray foam roof system. So if you'd like some additional information on spray foam roofing, or if you'd like to get an estimate, jump on our website, westroofingsystems.com. You can hit the learning resource link that'll have all of our information about the system and about us. And there's plenty of call to actions to uh, submit for a request for a quote.